Hey everybody, this is The Fourth here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to mix a kick drum. So the other day, a friend of mine showed me a track he made recently, and I heard the track and was amazed at how great his kick drum sounded. So I asked him how he got his kick drum to sound so great, and he told me what he did to his kick to get it to sound as good as it did, and that's what I'll be showing you in this video. Okay, so here's my kick drum. And the first thing he said he did was he put an EQ on it. And he said he boosted a narrow band at at 43 hertz. He said it was pretty narrow and he boosted it um, by about 3 decibels. So there we have that. And then he also said he boosted a bit of a wider band, but still not too wide, at at 10,000 hertz. And he said he only boosted that one by about 2 decibels. And that's all that he said he did with EQ. So the next thing he said he did was he put a compressor on it. And the settings he said he had were minus 6 decibels for the threshold. And he said he had a 3 to 1 ratio. He said he didn't adjust the gain, but the attack and the release were both as fast as possible. Okay, and that's all that he said he did uh, with the kick. So hopefully my kick is sounding pretty good right now. And let's see how it sounds. Well, it it's still pretty much sounds the same, doesn't it? Let me turn those effects off. It's, it sounds pretty much the same, so what's the deal? Was he lying to me, or is he keeping some kind of awesome kick-making secret, or what? And I don't think that's the case. I don't think he was lying to me. I don't think he's hiding any secrets. So something I didn't take into account with this kick compared to my friend is the original kick sample. So let's take a look at how these effects are actually affecting my kick. So I'm going to turn the monitor on in the EQ. And you can see that where I've boosted, there isn't any frequency information for the kick. So I'm really not actually affecting the kick very much, if at all, with this EQ. So even though this EQ worked with my friend's kick, it really does nothing to this kick. And then let's look at the compressor as well. So if we check out the peak meter for the kick, you'll see that I'm peaking just below minus 8 decibels. But the threshold on the compressor is at minus 6. And the way this type of compressor works is it only affects things that go beyond the threshold. So if my kick is only peaking at minus 8 decibels, it's, the compressor isn't doing anything to the kick at all. So even though this EQ and compression setup worked for my friend's kick, it obviously you know, doesn't really work for this kick. And this is a problem that I think many people have when they first start getting into mixing. You know, they want an easy way to do things. They want specific values to get the best sound possible. But as shown in this video, you know, what worked for my friend's kick doesn't work at all for this kick. And, you know, I have a sample pack here with 2,400 different kicks. And they all have a very different character from all of the others. So you can't expect that the same processing chain, the same settings, will work for all of these kicks, you know. Each one will probably have to be processed at least a little bit differently from the next to get the best possible sound. And 
you know, the way you do this is just learn your tools, learn how your tools work, and then use your ears to hear what adjustments make the kick sound better. And, you know, this is going to take some practice. It's going to take some time to get used to what you have to listen for. But in the end, it's going to be, you know, up to you and up to what sounds good to you. And just knowing your ears, knowing your speakers, and using those tools to shape the sound to be exactly how you want. And this is going to be the case for all of your sounds, not just your kick. You know, this is going to be the case for your snares, your hi-hats, your lead sounds, and everything. You know, every sound is going to be different, and every mix is going to be different. So you have to take things on a case-by-case -case basis and just use those tools and get the sound to sound good in your mix. So if you found this video by searching how to mix a kick drum, it probably wasn't the video you were looking for, but hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully you get a little bit of a better idea of what you actually need to do during the mixing process. And, you know, if you just stop searching for the right settings and the right way to do things, you can focus more on the sound and you can focus more on training your ears to hear things the way you need to hear them. And if you're a beginner, you know, you're already ahead of so many other people who are still searching for the right way and the perfect way to do things. Because really it is completely up to you.